do lottery tickets inspire author Marissa Stapley? Today on All About Books, we will find out. But before we ask Marissa, please hit that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with the latest author interviews and behind the book stories. I am so excited to have Marissa Stapley as a guest today. Marissa is an international best-selling author, award-winning journalist, editor, and educator, and we will be chatting about her latest book, Lucky, which is published by Simon and & Schuster. And to give you a little taste, here is what Lucky is about. Lucky Armstrong is a tough, talented grifter who has just pulled off a million dollar heist with her boyfriend, Carrie. She's ready to start a brand new life with a new identity when things go sideways. Lucky finds herself alone for the first time, navigating the world without the help of either her father or boyfriend, the two figures from whom she's learned the art of scam. When she discovers that a lottery ticket she's bought on a whim is worth millions, her elation is tempered by one big problem. Cashing in the winning ticket means the police will arrest her for her crimes. To find out what Lucky does, you're going to have to read Marissa's novel, Lucky. Welcome to All About Books, Marissa. Thank you so much, Crystal. So Marissa, you have had a very interesting job roster. Anything from stable hand, sports reporter, cemetery gardener, and the one that intrigues me, band roadie. <laughs> So how has this very eclectic job, um, jobs that you've had, how has this inspired your writing? Well, I think, I mean, ultimately, in many ways, I'm, I'm sort of unemployable, which inspired me to become a writer because I've had so many jobs because, you know, I was really perhaps not terribly good at all of them and, and always had these other dreams, always did want to be a writer. Um, so I think that what inspired my writing is just getting to a place where I could do that and I didn't have to worry about uh, doing odd jobs. Um, but I think, you know, having done interesting jobs like that, and I worked at a resort in my 20s in the Dominican, which of course mm. helped inspire um, writing The Last Resort, which was the book previous to Lucky, which was um, took place at a couples counseling resort where nothing was as it seemed. and. Um, so that sort of those interesting, funny little jobs, if I'm going through my memory bank thinking, okay, I need an idea. Uh, I always tend to be able to come up with something from my past to use as a springboard. And maybe it doesn't always turn into a book, but I'm certainly never without ideas. Okay. And this concept, you know, what if you had the winning lottery ticket could change your life forever, but you can't cash it in. What, where did this inspiration come from? So that one came to me. I actually, I believe I doesn't matter, but I know I was on a ski trip with my family. We were in the car and the radio was on mm -hmm. and the, the, I think it must have been a morning show because it wasn't a news item, but I remember the announcers were talking about this winning lottery ticket somewhere, I believe it was Carolina, and the, uh, it, it was about to expire, and no one had claimed it yet. So they just started speculating, as radio announcers often do, about why that might be. So one of them said, you know, you, sometimes people buy lottery tickets and they don't even know that, they don't even remember, like if, mm -hmm. if they just put it away, it ends up in a drawer. And I, they told a story about a lottery winner who found their million dollar ticket, but it had already expired. Um, and then the other one said, but sometimes people can't come forward for various reasons. Um, one of them being if there's a warrant out for their arrest, sometimes they have to get all their legal ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, oh, that's interesting. And at the time, actually, I had been trying to come up with a TV show idea, not a book idea. So I thought, well, this would make a great TV show. And I started thinking about it, but I couldn't quite, I had the idea, but I didn't have the plot. And then not too long after that, 
lucky just came to me it was just mm -hmm. all of a sudden her name who she was her situation it just all came to me i was on a bus i was going to visit my mom and by the time i got to where i was going i had texted my agent this idea uh -huh. and said i'm throwing away the other book that i was having trouble with this is the one and she's just like yes this sounds so good so um it was just a real it was a lot of fun and that's how i came up with the idea oh fantastic and lucky um she's a very unconventional hero I mean, I was rooting from her for her, Marissa, right from the get go. I really was rooting for her. Can you tell us about Lucky? So you're right that she is an unconventional heroine, and I have to be careful because I don't want to. I don't want to give too much away, and sometimes I forget about what's a spoiler, and what isn't. <laughs> um, but I think it's safe to say Lucky doesn't at first have a lot of control over how she came to be who she is. Um, she's really been blown through life kind of tumbleweed like down down the road. So when we meet her, even though it appears that all of her control and all of her choices have been taken away, it's actually the first time that she's really suddenly become the captain of her own ship. She's on her own. She's got to figure this out. And and so this is when we meet her and her strength really and and intelligence and resilience really begins to shine. Um, I wanted I wanted Lucky to be sympathetic. I wanted you to want to root for her. Yes. And it's very what I found interesting. And now as I'm beginning to promote the book, and it seems my timing is is good because con artists and particularly con women seem to be having a moment that there's this sympathy for con artists or I don't know if it's sympathy or fascination we yes. really enjoy con artists we we don't want to be conned ourselves but there's something very entertaining um and delicious about watching a con artist or hearing about a con artist who's very good at what she does so um I think that that's part of of the appeal of Lucky I think it's important that she is so good at what she does and and loves it um because that also makes us really like her even if we know what she's doing is wrong um but I also really like her moral code and I think that's an important piece of who she is yes, and yes. a lot of con artists probably not in the real world, but uh, in fictional con artists do have this moral code, right? And they, mm -hmm. and there are some people in this world who we really wish would get scammed. So <laughs> like it's, it's just, yeah. it's interesting. There's a lot, there's a lot to play with there. Mm -hmm. And I think that helped me create this character who is a criminal, like, okay, technically she, <laughs> but we really, we, we like her, we want her to win. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And with with Lucky, I mean, Lucky was introduced at a young age to the art of con, and it certainly got a little more sophisticated the older she got. So, Marissa, it, it, as a reader, it was kind of fun to play with the idea. Do you think anyone could be a con artist? That's a good question. I mean, I think what I was trying to show with Lucky is it was there's a lot of coincidence. So I mean, I do think that you have to be intelligent and she is very intelligent. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I mean, sometimes I think I could be a con artist because I'm so good at making up stories, <laughs> right? And that's yeah. probably what I loved about it. Um, but I know people who are very bad at lying. Like I think I remember seeing Margaret Atwood um, speak once and she was talking about the patron saint of liars and writers. And she read this poem and basically was saying how we're really good at lying. That's the whole point. We can lie well. Um, and the thing is like when I was a kid and if I ever needed to get out of something, whatever I told my parents would be this very complicated story that had so many details that, that it would just, how could anyone make that up? So I think writers could be good con artists. I just, I don't know if everyone could be a con artist, but what I do know, what I learned in my research is that most people uh, can be conned in some way. And that actually the reason that con artists are successful is because we have this inherent many people are still very trusting and i hope this doesn't change because there seems to be more and more cons and scams mm -hmm. and stuff with the world being as it is um but we want to trust and the whole our society in many ways is built on our trust of each other so mm -hmm. con artists prey on this really 
beautiful thing about society, which means we all are quite vulnerable to con artists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, and along that note, it must have been so funny. I mean, you had said that you're a good storyteller, but it must have been so fun to research these cons. Um, was there, where, where did you even begin to research? Cons? <laughs> well, I, I first started with books. I went to the library. I, I bought like Frank Abagnale's Catch Me If You Can, because that, yes. uh, that based on a real person. Um, and I read about Bernie Madoff and I read as many books as I could get my hand hands on about con artists. And then the internet is a great resource for just Googling like types of small grifts and finding like, so there's some blog entry where an actual con artist is explaining how to, to do a melon drop grift or a fake Samaritan grift or something like that. And, um, it's really interesting. And I, I did a, I put a news alert on um, just for like con artists to see. And so like, even I still have it. And the other, a few weeks ago, I got like somebody posed as Bruno Mars and conned a woman into believing that he needed a hundred thousand dollars because he'd fallen on hard times and couldn't get through the rest of his tour. So I just, and I, I hate that people lose money, but it's, it really is quite entertaining to see the thing that people will fall for. Yes. Right. And so it was a lot of fun and it I continue to research um, it. So I have a lot of fun with it to this day, just still looking at different types of cons and hopefully yeah. I'm now impervious to cons, but we'll see. <laughs> um, Marissa, what are you currently working on right now? So I am actually currently working on some TV development for Lucky, which is why I just said I'm still researching uh, cons and that sort of thing. So I am just about to announce that ABC Disney Studios has optioned Lucky with the producer Carlton Cuse, who did Lost and Jack Ryan, Bates Motel okay. attached. Um, so Carlton and his team happened upon Lucky in the summer and they quite enjoy her as well. And that has been uh, a really wonderful and exciting thing for me to be focusing on, especially now when we're in a pandemic and we don't, yes. we're not getting out as much. Yeah. So I have uh, often Zoom calls with Carlton and, and just starting to get used to how cool that is because he oh, really is quite a yeah. cool person. And we're currently in the development phase, meaning we're writing a treatment mm -hmm. for Lucky where we, it's very big picture, like what series would look like, what a season oh. would look like. And it means that Lucky is getting to have this new life. And it means that normally I would be working on something else. Mm -hmm. I would probably are publishing work so, so far in advance that I would probably be halfway through a new novel. I'm not, I'm still very firmly in this world and it's great. It's great not to have left it. It's, that is so exciting. Like, I mean, man, <laughs> to go from book into the screen and it's, I mean, and for you being the writer, you, you would know Relucky so well and have such a picture of who she is. Um, who can, can I ask who would be your dream to play Lucky? So we talk about this a lot. And initially we thought Shalene Woodley. Mm -hmm. Carlton is a really big fan of the idea of Zoe Kravitz playing Lucky. So oh, okay. that is where we are right now. And so I see her that way now, um, yes. depending on the day. And I really like that idea because Zoe Kravitz is the kind of character who you just, you want to look at, you'd watch her do anything, right? Yes. And watch yes. her grocery shop. So, mm -hmm. so it feels perfect right now. And we'll see. Yeah. She, Zoe, <laughs> are you available? Like, <laughs> Um, but it, that's fun, right? To to cast, to cast, uh, to cast your characters, and I know a lot of authors like to do that, and it's really fun to do that when you're actually really thinking that this is a possibility that someday you might see that person oh. playing your character. That is so exciting! A big congratulations, and I just think so exciting. 
And thank also, you. Marissa, thank you so much for coming on All About Canadian Books today and telling us about Lucky and your big news. And what I will do for all our viewers, I'll put links down below in the description box so that you can go to Marissa's website, learn more about her, also see her other incredible books that she's written, and you can purchase a copy of Lucky. So you will know what happens with this wonderful lottery ticket that she has purchased. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Marissa. Thank you so much.